Hello and welcome to the ninth installment of the Star Wars Armada for Vassal tutorial series. This is Green Knight speaking. Today we are going to talk about additional functionality. Um, we've uh, touched upon some of it, but uh, Vassal and the module contains a lot more functionality. This obviously is the startup screen, uh, where you have a list of all the modules you've installed. Armada and otherwise, uh, and any extensions associated with that module. Uh, deactivated extensions are grayed out and can be activated. Uh, you can also open a module, that's the same as double clicking it. You can edit a module, create a new module, and so forth. Um, those might appear in a, in a later tutorial. So for now, let's start a module. I'm using 370T because I've renamed it, texted. Going online again, <coughs> and we're here. I'm just gonna expand that. This image should be familiar by now. We uh, have the chat box here. And we have the main room, and we have the ability to create new room and to lock room and that's something uh, if you kind of don't want anyone else to see what you're up to uh, but still want to be online um, you can lock the room to um, get into a, a room uh, that you didn't create uh, you can uh, right click a user and you can send him an invite or you can kick them uh, I can't invite or kick myself, but I can do it with other users. So now you know that. Um, it's also possible to lock a room, send an invite just to get people to come to your room, then unlock it um, because you can't send invites to rooms that are not locked. So you can sort of lock it, then send a, an invite to someone. Hopefully they'll come join you, and then you can just uh, unlock the room. Okay. Um, this button here, useless. Uh, this button lets you disconnect. Uh, why you would want to voluntarily disconnect is beyond me. But if you get disconnected because the server goes down and your internet connection times out uh, because of a firewall or something, you can reconnect using this button. Um, <coughs> this exclamation point means you're looking for a game. This m means you're away from keyboard, obviously. There's even a little reminder here. Uh, this is a completely useless feature where you can sort of check messages that people have left on the server. Um, and it's checking it out. That is very cool. Uh, -ha -ha. Test. Okay, you see no one. So. You can use this other button to post messages. Another test. Yeah. And send. And look, green eyed, another test. Wow, that was pretty pointless. No one uses those. Uh, this button here gives us a service status. Uh, current, last 24, last week, last month. You can check out the statistics. Armada is pretty. Uh, <laughs> load right now. There is 12 on on X-Wing, uh, just me on Star Wars Armada. Mm, but if we look at last week, for example, we can scroll down and we can see that uh, X-Wing is by far more popular than uh, Armada, but the difference isn't so big that it used uh, as it used to be. Uh, okay, some people are playing Imperial Assault as well. Other Popular games are this one, Twilight Struggle, Lazl, uh, Advanced Squad Leader, 40k is popular, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, about it. So, uh, X-Wing is on top, um, Advanced Squad Leader second, and then uh, sort of Armada, Twilight Struggle, 40k, um, yeah, a couple other games uh, are in there competing for that third spot, if we can call it that, and last month, and yeah, well, 
uh, you can post messages completely pointless okay I think that uh, yeah you have a button here um, let's make a test room here and um, let's lock it okay needy dog get away uh, I have two dogs they try to help me uh, there's a button here synchronize <coughs> if for some for some reason uh, get kicked from the server or something weird kind of happens it can help to synchronize uh, with another user uh, this is grayed out I can synchronize with my myself um, but if I was playing a game with someone and I lost connection and I had to rejoin uh, I could try to synchronize if this table wasn't showing properly uh, yeah and you can also send people private messages uh, again I can't send that to myself mm -hmm. okay <coughs> now on top here is the main button row and you can see some of the buttons are grayed out they only become active uh, when there is some content the undo button here the bent arrow there's nothing to undo we haven't started a game the step forward button used for those log files uh, setup and other log files uh, uh, I haven't loaded a log file so there's nothing to step forward to um, this one pretty pointless it hides the server controls over there uh, maybe you can use it if uh, you have sort of just one screen and have to split your screen between uh, the chat room and uh, and the table table I haven't started a new game so that's grayed out uh, next is pieces uh, menu all the game pieces are here you should know that by now this is uh, the ninth tutorial after all. ship essentials all the command stacks and old school command and speed dials you can use them no one does but uh, you can do it um, Spawn tokens. If you accidentally accidentally delete one of or more tokens, you can just pull them back here. Okay. All the objectives grouped: assault, defense, navigation, and Karelian conflict. Sort of the menu disappears here. It's because it's gotten minimized. I don't know why it does that. Uh, yeah. And all the obstacle, of course you start with all these so you shouldn't really need them but uh, they're here tokens uh, including stuff like freestanding defense tokens and command tokens if you'd rather use those than the tokens integrated on the ship and squadron basis uh, yeah there's one called unaffiliated here which contains basically the two stations uh, and remember the values uh, on the station have been transposed so there is one blue anti-squadron and two red two blue anti-ship <coughs> that's gonna be an errata on that one and you have imperials and rebels and they are grouped by capital ship squadrons commanders and unique officers and each capital ship type has uh, a tab with the actual ship model and the various cards and squadrons the same the actual squadron spaces and the cards and commanders are of course well the commanders and unique officers and the rebels are just the same and non-affiliated upgrades go in here grouped by category and alphabetized uh, and uh, yeah no point showing that and here under campaign components we have stuff for the Corellian conflict and something called the Galact Gal Civil War or Galactic Civil War something I made sort of to get familiar with what I could do with the module in preparation for the Corellian conflict so you don't really need that and <coughs> yeah for now all the Wave 6 preview cards have been shoehorned into another category here at the end so you don't find external racks under upgrades ordinance they're here in their wave 6 preview well yeah. once uh, wave 6 hits I'll move them over to where they belong that's pieces dice nothing happens uh, you only get to open the dice if you are in a in a game room 
and same with all these buttons those are the damage decks uh, belonging to the player with the corresponding number uh, campaigns also empty uh, scenarios um, yeah test scenario is nothing uh, take the station uh, at some point I imagined fantasy flight would make many more scenarios uh, but for now it's just the one uh, I've also been planning on making some homemade scenarios but uh, it's never happened um, references uh, you have uh, a list of all the criticals here uh, and you have this one um, those are the various um, hotkeys listed for your convenience um, yeah there is um, one here criticals uh, that's not um, that's not correct I will have to fix that one so basically F2 is table so if you repeat, repeatedly hit F2 you can bring up the table and remove the table bring up the table remove the table so forth uh, if you okay it says lost tool 1 and lost tool 1 it should be 1 and 2 so if I hit uh, shift and Z uh, it's the same as pressing the lost tool button uh, same with everything else so yeah and you have some reference cards here uh, extra rules uh, and perhaps most importantly the current margin of victory table and there's also a notes here and if I now hit new game <coughs> and select say, let's say player one and planet and moon that's a cute one um, yeah you have to create a room to start a new game so I'm gonna hit OK and new room I don't have to start all over again uh, I get the background and player one status I just chose I just have to sort of type in a name for my room for it to appear and now you can see some of the stuff that was grayed out before isn't grayed out anymore so if you go on campaigns Wow, Korean conflict, the Korean conflict map. I'll talk about that uh, in more detail in the next tutorial. So, for now, we're gonna close that one. And notes, um, uh, you can sort of test notes, uh, and I can save it. And this one is, uh, I don't know. You can write all sorts of gibberish here. Um, I don't know why, it, when it's going to be useful, but you can sort of you can make notes. Um, <coughs> this one could be used to uh, sort of send delayed messages. You can um, make a message here, and you can keep it for later, and you can sort of reveal and uh, you can see here green knight has created message test so i don't know it's there i think i had some plans for it at some point um turn counter suddenly appears and of course the damage deck and by now you should know how to use the damage deck you just pull a card and maybe flip it over Oh, project a missile line, and you can flip it back, or you can send it to the discard pile. Um, <coughs> just one quick note about the damage deck. Um, if you pull a card like project a missile line, and let's just undo. And now, in a real deck, the top card is going to be project a missile line but it's not it's life support failure because <coughs> the game uh, randomly draws a card the moment you pull it so if you reveal a face-up card uh, don't undo it because that will mean you're gonna more, most likely pull a different card next one uh, I could go into details about why I haven't implemented that in another way but um, suffice to say uh, this is the best way of doing it within the limitations of the 
module. Okay, damage deck dice. Uh, simple. You have three colors here. Right click, roll between one and ten die. And once you've rolled, you can also add a die from concentrate, concentrate fire or whatnot. You can also well, play the sound, that's not really use very useful. I should probably hide that command so you don't see it. Uh, but you can set it to blank or accuracy, you can cancel it. Oh, okay, we have another play sound here. It's um, too... okay, I'll have to do something about that. And you can cancel the die. And you can re-roll the die, and everything you do is reported here and associated with the little sound reminder. Uh, okay, and you can do the same for every. Or can you can clear the dice, uh, and you can and you can use this button on the bottom here to clear everything. Okay. Uh, that was the dice. Uh, so you have, you can look at the dice, you get it reported in the chat here, and you get little sound effects, sort of like a wake up call. That's die. Uh, retire lets you become an observer or lets you pick another player. Uh, you don't want to do that mid game. Uh, but maybe if you join uh, a room and as an observer and hey should we play and okay and uh, then you'd have to join as a uh, player two three four five six something um, yeah we already covered this this is the undo button uh, I can sort of undo some of my die rolls here mm -hmm. and if I hit table uh, I'm back here and I'm gonna drag this down here just a bit and okay there I think this is probably the best way of uh, playing on on one screen I think something like that and I, in addition I could probably have my uh, damage deck over here now I can see the chat, I can type, I have access to all the buttons I need, I have the dice roller and I have the damage deck and I have the table here. Okay. And if I now load a continuation here, um, set up logs, oh, whatever, I'm just gonna pull something, no, that was really old. Uh, okay, something oslish, uh, and you get this warning, uh, but it's okay. Uh, and now step forward is available, and I have this weird ass oslo. Oh, it's the one I made um, as part of an older previous tutorial. And uh, yeah, I think that covers the main buttons here. Um, in addition, you have the menu here. New game is obviously a new game. Um, load continuation, and that's obvious. Uh, you load the log file, begin the log file. Uh, you begin a new log file. You already know that. And of course, end log file once you're done. And log files get saved as we logs, save games as we saves or we saves. Um, Close game just closes down the game. Uh, it's pretty intuitive, I think. Um, if you start a game by importing a log file, you should probably use save game as, or I have this nagging sensation that if you just hit save game here, you're, you're gonna save on top of that vlog file. It's still gonna have the vlog extension, but it's gonna be a save game and it's gonna be unusable. Uh, this I think is new in Vassal 3.2.17. Uh, I never encountered it before, but now I get reports of people having problem with that. So my recommendation is save game as and save it as something because then it guaranteed comes up with or if it doesn't you should always end it with this extension. 
So log is a log file and a sub is a save game. And you have preferences here. And uh, well, um, there isn't much to do here really. You can sort of expand your memory heap uh, here if you have a lot of RAM. That might help um, if you zoom in uh, a lot or generally have a lot of clutter on the on the table there. Uh, you might save yourself some some hang-ups or, um, or other problems. So, uh, it's not been a problem for me, but uh, so I just leave this one alone. Um, personal, uh, basically here you can change your password and you can also change your username. So I can be Green Knight 2. And you can also sort of put in some info here so when people right-click your username they see your profile. And well, we're on daylight savings now, so it's plus two, and I'm the module developer, and well, maybe not abysmal, but sometimes I feel like I need to whine a bit, so there it is. Um, send wake up, oh, completely useless. Uh, we're always on the legacy server, so rest isn't relevant. Um, chat window, you can change the font and the size of the um, message text uh, and you can also change whatever color. So I like having my messages blue, all other messages are black. System messages are gray and in-game report messages are pink. Yeah, you can change that. Now, this one, P1 loss, uh, for some reason uh, uh, this tab has to do with the first the line of sight tool. Don't mess with it. Just just leave it alone. And uh, the turn counter. You can free the turn counter by removing this dock into the toolbar. And then, well, you get this button here, and you can sort of drag the turn counter around. But uh, wow, is that useless? So just leave it docked there. Mm, now we covered everything in the menus uh, and so forth. So we're gonna focus on the on the table. Um, this is what we call a start stack. It's the spawn tokens and all the obstacles and some key tokens here, initiative tokens. Uh, and the point here is, if you need more of those, you can copy them, uh, Control C, or if you don't need. Uh, Something most objectives don't use the dust fields, for example, you can just delete them. delete them. Yeah, but if you need two stations, you can totally do that. Um, you can get rid of the tokens and you can give the first player the initiative token. And you can do stuff like. Yeah, I don't know. You can see it here. You can spawn a token. Dangerous territory, for example, and you can flip it uh, because in the real world you can totally put it down on both sides. I don't think people really think about that. You can bring up the distance band and so forth, and of course you have the quick spawn stuff here. You should be familiar with that. On top here is the zoom. Uh, you can either zoom step by step in and out or you can select from the menu or you can fit width height and uh, you can do other for example so and you have a built-in or you can take a, an image file from the table very useful huh. Okay, and then you have a button here, overview. Uh, it can be nice. It can quickly let you uh, see where everything is. I don't use it very often, but it's there. And of course, line of sight threads. Um, and these are two hotkeys that you probably want to learn right away: Shift Z and Alt Z. Because if I go Shift Z, I can just use the Lost tool there, and I don't have to click. Uh, 
And remember what I said before, uh, once you have the Lost Tool out, you can sort of drag it several times as long as you click, drag, release, click, drag, release, click, drag, release. Um, or maybe more like this. Measuring. And then I want to measure there. And also on the topic of the Lost Thread, there is the Fade function. Um, page Ship and now you can suddenly see the lost dots that previously were hidden and it's much easier to measure and as an added bonus here you can even roll the dice and then resume using the lost tool as long as you don't click somewhere else on the table you can totally roll the dice and just continue using the lost tool without needing the hotkeys or pressing the the button there. Now that is really useful if the enemy has sort of a ton of fighters parked up front here and your ISD wants to blast away on them and you do this and you do shift Z and you point at this guy. I can zoom in a bit and you go to the blue and a black from Callus, and the other guy takes damage and then you just zoom here and of course he's a scatter ace so yeah well I can't roll blue dice for shit so yeah and I add a die and Stengar just scatters of course uh, but you can see the point uh, uh, I can quickly point to what squadrons I'm uh, shooting at, I can quickly roll a die. I'm gonna, if my opponent is paying attention, he can quickly use defense tokens and take whatever hull damage is incoming. Okay? Uh, those were the lost threads. Um, another word of warning is don't undo something with the lost thread showing or it might get stuck. If it gets stuck, undo until it's no longer visible. Uh, then do whatever needs to be done. Uh, that's an important tip. Uh, it's especially bad if one player uses the lost tool and then the other player undoes. Or undoes. So be careful with that. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen. The straighten tool button, control S, another hotkey you want to learn just straightens out the tool. Uh, it's polite to do that after you uh, made your move. Um, so I always go straighten tool and then remove tool and then report set. Uh, I think that's a nice way to finish your ship's move. Makes it easier for your opponent too. Um, and of course remove tool removes everything. So if these guys have some shit up and we have the maneuver tool uh, the maneuver tool always removes all the other measurements but remove tool clears everything away this button is used in the status phase at the end of the, the round it um, cycles the command stacks uh, and refreshes all the tokens that need refreshing but it does not take care of sort of critical effects that uh, say this or that token can't refresh uh, you have to take care of that manually afterwards yeah. and of course the setup area button ambush zone button and blockade run setup and this one that when I hit it applies the default values to all all ships get their default uh, shields and tokens and whatnot. And this guy only works during round zero. Once that hit round one, it n doesn't do anything anymore. And that's because I don't want people accidentally hitting it mid game. It takes a while to resolve, and there's well, you will have to undo, and uh, it's it's better to have it blocked. Okay, um, 
I guess that's it. Yeah. Okay. See you next time.